What's good? Happy Friday it is once again another installment of Mystery Unsolved. You know my name. You know this game. Let's get at it. Tonight's episode is on who, sh- who shot, who killed Johnny Ringo. Now, if you're a Wild West enthusiast, chances are you're like, why is this even a thing? Johnny Ringo killed himself. It was a suicide. No. No. I'm sorry. No badass outlaw back in the day, the wild, wild west, kills himself. Also, given what we're about to hear from what I read, I assure you it's anything but a suicide. So without further ado, mystery unsolved. Who killed Johnny Ringo? First things first, we need to tell you a little little story about who old Johnny Ringo was. For those who don't know, John Peters Ringo, also known as Johnny Ringo, was an American Old West, (laughs) an American Old West outlaw loosely associated with the Cochise Country Cowboys in Frontier Boomtown, Tombstone, Arizona Territory. That's right, he was from Tombstone. That's right. He took part in the Mason County War in Texas, during which he did his first murder. He was arrested and charged with murder. He was affiliated with the Cochise Country Sheriff Johnny Bahan, Ike Clanton, and Frank Stillwall during the 1881-1882. Johnny Bahan, ah, that's a popular name and also in Wild West folklore, culture. And of course, Ike Clanton. He got into a confrontation in Tombstone with Doc Holliday and was suspected by Wyatt Earp for having taken part in the attempted murder of Virgil Earp and the ambush and death of Morgan Earp. So, yeah, that's who Johnny Ringo is. For those who didn't know or forgot, Ringo was found dead with a bullet wound to his temple, which was ruled a suicide. Modern writers have advanced, have various theories attributing his death to Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Frank Leslie, or Michael O'Rourke. So pretty much just the old, you know, bullet to the temple. The problem is, as we're going to get into, it's a lot more complicated than just a simple bullet to the head. He died on July 13th, 1882, at the age of 32. His body was discovered in Turkey Creek Canyon, Arizona. All right. Do we want to know his life in Tombstone? Let's, let's dig this. I feel like this might be a short case. So let's dig a little more on who Johnny Ringo was. Ringo, yeah, we know right. He first appeared in the Cochise County, Arizona Territory. We know this. In December 1879, a drunk Ringo shot unarmed Lewis Hancock in, a, in Safford, Arizona saloon when Hancock refused to refused a complimentary drink of whiskey, stating that he preferred beer. Hancock survived his wound. Soon after arriving in Tombstone, Arizona, he met with editor Sam Purdy of, Tombst- of the Tombstone Epitaph. Who later writes of their talk, he said that he was certain of being killed as he was living then. Wait, what? He said that he was as certain of being killed as he was of living then. He said that he might run along a couple of years more and may now last two days. May not last two days. So the one thing to know, if you're not familiar with uh the Wild West, outlaws, cowboys, just men in general. They didn't expect to live long, you know. That was their way of life. They went every. They went. They woke up every day. They put their boots on one, one foot at a time, and they just pretty much were like, you know, this might be the day I get gunned down. And that's just that was life. Very strange life, but you know, life nonetheless. He was occasionally and anonymously referred to as Ringgold by local newspapers. He described himself as spectacular in the 1882 Cochise County Greats Register. 
Oh, excuse me, not spectacular. Speculator. Spectacular. Uh, Johnny Ringo is not flamboyant, I assure you of that. He described himself as a speculator, whatever that means. On January 17th, 1882, Ringo and Doc Holliday traded threats and seemed to headed for a gunfight. Both men were arrested by Tombstone's chief of police, James Flynn, and hauled before a judge for carrying weapons in town. That seems like a loose thing to uh, arrest somebody on in the Wild West, but I imagine they wanted to get both of these men off the damn streets. Both were fined. Judge William H. Stilwell followed up on charges outstanding against Ringo for a robbery in Galleyville, and Ringo was rearrested and jailed on January 20th for the weekend. Ringo was suspected by the Earps of taking part in the January 28th, 1881 ambush of Virgil Earp that crippled him for life in the March 18th, 1882 murder of Morgan Earp, which he was shooting while he was shooting pool in a tombstone saloon. Deputy U.S. Marshal Wyatt Earp. That's right, Wyatt Earp was a U.S. Marshal. How about that, huh? And his posse killed Frank Stilwell in Tucson on March 20th, 1882. After the shooting, the Earps and federal posse, in a federal posse, set out on a vendetta to find and kill the others they held responsible for ambushing Virgil and Morgan. Cochise County Sheriff Johnny Bahan received warrants from a test. Tucson judged for arresting of the Arabs in Holiday. He deputized Ringo and 19 other men, many of them friends of Stillwell and the Cochise County Cowboys. So, as you can tell, it was kind of a like, it was definitely a feud. Like one side would say that they were good and the other side was bad. And the other side would say, well, but we're good and they're bad. You know, during the Earp Vendetta ride, Wyatt Earp killed one of Ringo's closest friends, Curly Bill Brocious, in a gunfight at Iron Springs. Earp told his biographer, Stuart Lake, that a man named Florentino Cruz confessed to being the lookout at Morgan's murder, identified Ringo, Stillwell, Swilling, and Brocious as Morgan's killers. The local posse pursued and came close to the federal posse at Henry C. Hooker's ranch, but never faced the Earp lawman. Former Pima County Sheriff Bob Paul, a random name, Bob Paul, who had been in Tombstone at the time and volunteered to ride with the Bahan Posse, wrote a letter to the Tucson citizen on March 3rd, 1898, in response to an earlier story he said was full of errors. He said the Earp Posse had told Hooker to tell Bahan and his posse where they were camped, Hooker told Bahan where the Earps were camped, but the posse left in the opposite direction. So again, a lot of just, a lot of back and forth talk, a lot of hearsay. So it's really hard to say what actually, you know, who took part in what henceforth. But let's get to the uh, reason we're here, shall we? I'm ready to draw. During Tombstone's 4th of July festivities, Ringo drank heavily. He left town two days later, taking several bottles of liquor for the ride. Deputy Bill Brecken, Breckenridge. That is a cool last name, Breckenridge. I'm going to have to write that one down for later use. Deputy Bill Breckenridge saw him two days later near Dials Ranch in the south pass of the Dragoon Mountains. He later wrote that Ringo was very drunk, reeling in the saddle. He encouraged Ringo to follow him back to the Goodridge Ranch, but he was drunk and stubborn and went on his way. I think this was the last time he was seen alive. At about 3 p.m. on July 13th, ranch hands at a nearby ranch heard a shot. Teamster James Yost was hauling wood when he found Ringo's body on July 14th, seated in a bunch of five large black jack oaks grooming up in a semicircle from one root and in the center of them was a large flat rock which made a comfortable seat. Uh, just picture that. <laughs> he was not more than 700 feet from Smith's house 
in West Turkey Creek Valley near Chiricahua Peak in Arizona Territory. His body had already turned black from the desert heat. Ooh. Damn. Damn, the downfalls of living in Arizona. Whew. His feet were his feet were wrapped in strips of cloth torn from his undershirt. Ringo had lost his horse with his boots tied to the saddle. The coroner's report noted that he had evidently traveled but a short distance in this footgear. There was a bullet hole in his right temple and an exit wound at the back of his head. So, so that thing was turned like that. So here's our first thing. Before I read any further, if you were going to kill yourself, you're just going straight and it's going out the other temple. This one, it's almost, it's, yeah, like you have to point the gun sideways. Like, remember Fight Club? When Edward Norton shoots himself at the end? He did a horrible job, but it went through his mouth and down. Which just goes to show you, like, doing that is one thing, but why would you shoot at, why would you point the gun at an angle? The fatal wound was upward at a 45 degree angle between the right eye and ear. His revolver was still in his right hand. So again, 45 degrees is like, yeah, again, it's at an angle. Yeah, 45 degree angle. So like between the right eye and the temple. So, so it's a right, yeah, so we're talking right here, that's the temple but it's pointed this way. So it doesn't really, like, why would you shoot? Like, he was drunk. There is that. We can't rule that out. He was drunk. So maybe he was just like, uh. I mean, it's not the weirdest idea in the world. So maybe we're going to need a little bit more unless I just solved the murder of Johnny Ringo. According to the coroner's report, Ringo's Colt Single Action Army 45 revolver held five cartridges. The hammer rested on the empty chamber. A knife cut was found at the base of his scalp, as if someone had cut it with a knife. His horse was found 11 days later, about two miles away from Ringo's boots still tied to the saddle. A coroner's inquest officially ruled his death a suicide. So... The whole knife cut as if somebody was trying to scalp him, that's a little weird. But not entirely weird because if he still killed himself and Indians were in the area, they could have tried to like, oh, let's try to scalp him. And then they're just like, no, screw it. Ringo's body is buried near the base of the tree where it was discovered. A grave is located on private land. A gate on a nearby road permits visitors to view the site. Despite the coroner's ruling and contemporary contemporaneous newspaper reports that Ringo had frequently threatened to commit suicide and that the event was expected at any time. Alternative theories of doubtful plausibility about Ringo's death may have proposed over the years. Some assert that the lack of powder burns on his head suggests he was shot from a distance. The coroner's jury report does not mention the presence of absence of powder burns. Furthermore, Ringo's body was already turning black due to decomposition. So let's just backtrack that for a minute. The lack of powder burns on his head suggests that he was shot from a distance. Because obviously, if you were going to blow your brains out, there's going to be a lot of powder residue on your, on your face. The coroner's jury report does not mention in the presence or absence of powder burns. So they don't say what I mean. It's, it's again, it's one of those, they don't mention either. It's just not mentioned. Robert Boiler, well, Robert Bowler, who said Boiler? Robert Bowler, a member of the coroner's jury wrote in 1934, 
I showed James Yost where the bullet had entered the tree on the left side. Blood and brains were oozing from the wound and matted his hair. <clears throat> there was an empty shell in the six-shooter, and the hammer was on that. I called it a suicide 52 years. I called it a suicide 52 years ago. I am still calling it a suicide. I guess I'm the last of the coroner's jury. The coroner's jury. This would be a good title for a Western book, huh? Wyatt Earp claims, according to the book, I Married Wyatt Earp, which author and collector Glenn Boyer claimed to have assembled from manuscripts written by Earp's third wife. Earp and Doc Holliday returned to Arizona with some friends in early July and found Ringo camped in West Turkey Creek Valley. As Ringo attempted to flee upon a canyon, Earp shot him with a rifle. Boyer refused to produce his source manuscripts, and reporters wrote that his explanations were conflicting and not credible. New York Times contributor Alan Barra wrote that I, Mar that I Married White Earp is now recognized by Earp's researchers, researchers as a hoax. Well, I would think so. I mean, the bullet that went through him and that was found in the tree or the bullet found in him would be would be way different than a rifle bullet. Tombstone historian Ben T. Trawick thought the story about Earp's involvement was credible, reasoning that only Earp had sufficient motive. He was probably in the area at the time, and near the end of his life, he told one historian in circumstantial detail how he killed Johnny Ringo. Earp was interviewed in 1888 by an agent, California historian, Hubert H. Bancroft. In 1932, Frank Lockwood, who authored Pioneer Days in Arizona, wrote that Earp told both of them that he killed Ringo as he left Arizona in 1882, almost four months before Ringo died. He included other details that do not match what is known about Ringo's death. Earp repeated his story to at least three other people. In an interview with a reporter in Denver, 1896, Earp denied that he had killed Ringo, but later privately claimed once again that he had. See, you see what I mean? Like this back and forth. But also this one really big thing to note here. Why would you claim to kill somebody if you didn't? This goes back to the whole like John Benet thing. Or, you know, why serial killers take credit for kills that they didn't actually do. Same thing, even back in the Western days. And it's all about prestige. It's all about, you know, fame, credibility. The more kills you have on, on your list, the more, the more notorious you are. And obviously back then, Johnny Ringo was a big name. And Wyatt Earp knew that. So he probably went back and forth, throwed, you know, Five years, let's let's just call it five years. Yeah, I killed him. No, no, that's not true. I didn't do it. Yeah, I killed him. No, that's not true. I didn't. Yeah, I, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> and it's like we can sort of test it, but at the same time, we can't. We can't really prove anything. <clears throat> Doc Holiday story. The Holiday theory is similar to the Herb theory, except that Holiday is alleged to have killed Ringo. To be fair, I read a book where Doc Holliday does in fact kill Johnny Ringo. Although Johnny Ringo was already dead and was resurrected as a zombie. So, I mean, that sort of counts, right? <laughs> a variant popularized in the movie Tombstone asserts that Holliday stepped, stepped in for the herb. Stepped in for herb, Jesus, in response to a gunfight challenge from Ringo and shot him. Records of the Pueblo County, Colorado District Court indicate that Holiday and his attorney appeared in court on July 11th, 14th, and 18th, 1882, to answer charges of larceny. However, a writ of capius was issued for him on the 11th, suggesting that he did not, in fact, appear in court on that date. Mm. Ringo's body was found on the 14th. Six days before Ringo's death, the Pueblo Daily Chieftain reported that Holiday was in Salida, Colorado, about 670 miles from Turkey Creek, Arizona, and then in Leadville, about 700 miles 
distance on July 18th. There was still an arrest warrant outstanding on holiday in Arizona for his part in the Frank Stillwell murder, making it unlikely that he would have entered Arizona at the time. So again, why is Doc Holiday linked to the killing Ringo? Because they had beef too. Because he's just as big of a name as Johnny Ringo. We all know Doc Holiday. We all know Wyatt Earp. You may or may not know Johnny Ringo, depending on how much you know about the Wild West. But these three names are all big. So again, added as a little notch on the list. Unfortunately, they kept, you know, documents that said otherwise that holiday 670 miles away from turkey creek there's no way michael o'rourke theory some accounts attribute ringo's death to michael o'rourke on internet an internet gambling who was arrested in tucson in january 1881 on suspicion of murdering a mining engineer named henry schneider Wyatt Earp is said to have protected him from being lynched by a mob organized and led by Ringo. Okay, this little motive right there. Wyatt, uh, O'Rourke escaped from jail in April 1881 and never stood trial on the murder charges. The last documented sighting of O'Rourke was in the Dragoon Mountains near Tombstone during May 1881 well-mounted and equipped and presumably on his way out of the territory. From then on, he is referred to only in unsubstantiated rumors and legends, according to one, a combination of, of the debt he owed Earp and the grudge he had against Ringo prompted him to return to Arizona in 1882. Whew, wow, this is a long-ass sentence. Track Ringo down and kill him. God, I was like, when is this sentence going to end? While some sources consider the story plausible, others point out that O'Rourke, like Holiday, would have been reluctant to re-enter Arizona with a murder warrant hanging over his head, particularly to commit another murder. That's, that's very true. But at the same time, it depends on who you are. Doc Holliday just happened to be in another town. I don't think Doc Holliday would have given two flying craps about re-entering a town to kill another man, nor would have White Earp, based off what we know about them today. Frank Leslie claimed, while in the Yuma Territorial Prison for killing his wife, Jesus, Buckskin Frank Leslie reputedly confessed to a guard that he had killed Ringo. Few believed his story, and some thought he was simply claiming credit for it to curry favor with Earp's inner circle, or for whatever notoriety, notoriety it might bring him. Exactly. See what I mean? It would bring them notoriety. Like, oh, you're the one who killed Johnny Ringo? Like, oh, we're going to tell tales about you. Years later, we're going to tell tales about you. And now we're not telling tales about any of them for that particular for this particular reason it's all hearsay it's all theory it's all smoke all right so what do I think? Well, I don't think it was uh, Frank Leslie. I just think he wanted notoriety because he was the least known out of the, out of the four. Michael O'Rourke, there is some there's some good evidence there. There's some good like not evidence, but there's some good um, backstory as to why he would want Ringo dead. I would put that at three. I don't think Doc Holliday was anywhere near Arizona territory. I don't think he did it. My my number two is that he killed himself. And my number one is I think maybe Wyatt Earp did do it. Although maybe not. Maybe it flipped them. I don't know. 
I don't so I don't want I don't like the I just don't like the idea of an outlaw killing themselves. Even no, no matter how many times he said he was going to do it. But this is a badass outlaw of the Wild West. It is totally, like I said in the very beginning, it's totally possible that he was drunk, pointed his gun really awkwardly towards his temple and just blew it. But I want to feel like, I feel like he should have gone out better than that. Like, don't they all, didn't they all deserve to go out like that? Like, better? So, I guess I do like this idea, but at the same time, I like Wyatt Earp's, the, the Wyatt Earp theory. <clears throat> Because he had motive, and he kind of sort of was likely in the area. He could have come back. Nobody kind of – there's no – there's nothing to suggest that he didn't. So, yeah, I'm going to go with those two theories. What do you think? Do you think the old Johnny Ringo killed himself awkwardly? Do you think Wyatt Earp did it? I think it's one of those two. Or do you think it was one of the other guy, one of the other men, or maybe it's a theory I didn't even come across or read? You know what to do. You never do. <laughs> Post your uh, your thoughts and theories in the comments. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Mystery Unsolved. Who shot Johnny Ringo? Until next week.